Hello everybody, welcome to another update on the stock screener. We got another competitor from Team Finn um, at the Basca Oil Challenging Pure Day Energy. So let's see if uh, Pure Day Energy can be defeated. First of all, let's talk about natural gas again. We need to invest in that because we have an EV boom and a gas arbitrage to close between US and EU. Oil demand going down, natural gas demand going up. This is the arbitrage, the EU gas is much higher than the US gas, so this gas price will close up uh, compared to the EU gas. So that's the arbitrage in gas. In oil, we don't see any arbitrage, okay? So there's nothing to play here. So we know that Athabasca oil is not gas, so um, it's difficult to compare this. Um, here you have the arbitrage to play on. Here we don't have arbitrage, but let's compare it anyway. The charts look very similar to me. Um, all in an uptrend. So let's dive into the numbers. Athabasca oil is about eight times bigger than pure day energy. PE ratio is uh, higher. So here the pure day energy is still winning. This is pure gas and this is pure oil. And they call it thermal oil. Uh, net debt is 200 and here it's 150, but they are going to pay it off very fast. So compared to the market cap, this is actually very low. Interest rate 10%, 20%. So there's a bit of leverage here, but financial leverage here is much higher. Decline rates are about the same. Uh, CapEx is three times higher. Um, compared to the market cap, it's still very low CAPEX. So, so far, so good. Both are very good companies so far. Now we come to the operating costs. Both are very high in operating cost. So if oil declines or gas declines, then you could see uh, low margins. So that's a risk. Free cash flow is yeah, about the same. So here we see already that there is a discrepancy in valuation. Here we have one times free cash flow. And here we have like uh, six, seven times free cash flow. Yeah, six to seven times free cash flow. So, yeah, Athabasca oil is overvalued based on free cash flow basis, and pure day energy is much cheaper. Tax pools are very good at Athabasca oil, two times market cap, but here it's three times market cap, so still winning. Reserves, okay, so on the reserve side, Athabasca oil is super, super high reserves, five times higher than pure day energy. So if you like an asset that's very big, then Athabasca oil is a good candidate for you. And here we beat pure day energy on royalties as well, lower royalties. So, yeah, uh, in conclusion, if we look at the free cash flow basis, then Pure Day is a winner. But if you look at the reserves, then Athabasca Oil is a winner. Let's look at the leverage. The leverage, difficult to compare, but 160 oil should be around the 10 ICO price for gas. And 110 should be 6 ICO gas. Currently, we are at 76 oil and 5 
five-ish iCorp. So let's look at the leverage. At 10 iCorp, we have a 15x upside, very high upside. And at Atabasca Oil, we have about uh, four times upside. So leverage is much uh, lower at Atabasca Oil. At 110 oil and 6 ICO, then we have a 7x here. And here we have a double from 1.5 to 3 to 3.5. So that's a double upside. Not bad. But here comes the risk. When we go to 76 oil, and today we are at 76 oil, you can see that this goes lower than the market cap. So there is downside now. Downside of 30-40%. While at ICO 5, we still have a triple upside at pure day energy. So why is this? Because the costs of production of thermal oil are very high. So if oil declines, then we are going to see very small margins and there is downside risk if oil falls. So yeah, in conclusion, I think uh, it's still better to be in pure day energy than Atabasca oil. Um, they can have high reserves, but you can also see here there's no growth. Uh, production will be flat. Um, yeah. And there is high risk that if oil goes down, that then you have uh, shrinking margins. And this is also not a gas play. You can't play this uh, gap closure. So, yeah. That's the conclusion. I think Pure Day Energy is still uh, undefeated. I'll see you in the next video.